WBXO Classic Rock redefined and also part of the Pat Soundbites Unplugged. An honor to have on our rock and roll phone co-founder, lead guitarist, vocalist of the great rock band, The Smithereens, Mr. Jim Babcheck. Happy New Year, Jim. Thanks for your time today. Oh, my pleasure, and Happy New Year. Yeah. <laughs> Jim, Dennis, Mike, and the guys are hitting the road again, and that is all, always good news for Smithereen fans of being joined by the wonderful Robin Wilson of um, the Jim Blossoms. And, uh, you know, that 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 is great news. I'm sure not just for the fans, but for even for you guys to get back on and, and keep, the, keep the music alive. Oh, yeah, it's, it's our passion. I mean, what else would I be doing? You know, I'm not going to give it up. No, nah, you know, it, it's been a year since the unexpected passing of, of Pat, and, I, you know, there's no better way than to keeping the music alive and performing live and keeping his spirits alive, and I think that's the best... Um, What's the what's the word? The best uh, in, not ingredient uh, medicine that you can do to you know the the, the sting will never go, the the sting goes away, but the pain certainly will never go away, and it's the best honor for you guys and for him. Right, right. Yeah, we have to keep moving. Um, you know, I, I also lost my wife uh, two and a half years ago from pancreatic cancer, uh. and it's it's kind of like you know what I have to. I, music is my therapy, and uh, you know it makes me feel great to go out there and play. And I, I know people that come to the audience come to see us play; they're, they're paying to come see us, and you know we want to give them a good show. And it's um, you know if they can escape from their real life problems for an hour or two, well, you know while we're playing, then you know we've done our job. You know, every every we we all if everybody gets enjoyment out of it, then then it's a win win. Yeah, no, don't no doubt about that. How did you? I mean, the Jim Blossom sound, the Smithereen sound are, are really close. How did you? How did how did you get the relationship with like the Robin Wilsons and the uh, Marshall Crimshaws that is also going to be joining you on a few shows? Yeah, we've been doing shows with Marshall uh, all last year. Um, well, Marshall goes back to, you know, back to when he started. We opened for him in 1981. And then when we did our first album, uh, he was a guest on our record under the pseudonym Jerome Jerome. So, okay. you know, under the credits, you'll see Jerome Jerome playing keyboards on uh, one of our songs, and he plays six string bass on, on Love Morning, uh, White Castle Blues. And then with Robin Wilson, uh, we were on the Green Thoughts Store in 88. He was a clerk at a record store in um, Scottsdale, Arizona, uh, Zia Records. And um, he was a clerk there. He wasn't in the, there were no Jim Blossoms yet. So he, he, remember, he has pictures of us coming through signing autographs uh, around that time. And he said he made the display for the albums, our albums back then. So it's, it's a small world, right? Wow, that's a cool story. Who would ever think that? Yeah. He watching the videos, he gets on stage and he knocks it out. I mean, you can see that he has a true love for your music. I mean, there's I mean, not to say he sounds like Pat, but he really knocks the ball out of the park. I'm looking forward to uh, going to your show Friday night at the, in Connecticut at the Ridgefield Playhouse. I'm really looking forward to that. That that's a great story. Well, you know, that's the thing. We, 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 we're not looking to have a sound alike, you know. I mean, that's, for us, it wouldn't work. It, you know, it works for certain bands, I guess. Um, but uh, for us, if, if the singer just captures the essence of the song and, you know, you got the three guys that played on the record and came up with their own parts and wrote some of the songs uh, playing it live, so... And the other thing is, these guys, Marshall, Robin, and um, there's a couple other people, uh, they don't use cheat sheets. They, <laughs> they know the lyrics, you know, which sometimes I don't even know the lyrics to my own songs. <laughs> it's very impressive. Yeah, I mean, watching Robin, 
I watched a few videos last night, and Robin, man, he just comes on stage and knocks the, knocks it out of the park. And I go, well, there's a guy that really loved your music, knows the lyrics, knows the songs, and, you know, there's got to be no better satisfaction than seeing a colleague that's willing to jump on board and keep the music alive. I, I thought it would be interesting to hear you know, his style and take on the songs, you know, but I really don't see much of a difference. Huh. Is there? Um, yeah, I, I... Is there a little really, bit of a difference? I didn't really notice. Um, I mean, he doesn't sound anything like Pat. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, but, uh, and then, you know, I don't know if, you know, Ted Leo from Ted Leo and the Pharmacist, he, he joined us on stage also recently, and he's, he's another guy that's going to be joining us. And also Susan Cowsill. Oh. You know, you know, we go way back, and I think that would be an interesting take uh, to have a female um, singer playing, uh, singing our songs. That would be uh, a really nice... Uh, uh, what's the right word? <laughs> yeah, a nice, a nice change, right? A, a nice new, yeah. new a breath of fresh air. Seeing how yeah. that would work out, that's cool. What's what's gonna what's the process in creating the song list for the shows? I mean, obviously Robin and I, and I'm sure Marshall know them inside and out. Do they're not doing any of theirs? It's all smithereen stuff, correct? Right, right. It's the smithereens with special guest vocalist. Okay. And, you know, we we obviously have to do the the most popular ones, the hits, and then and then we let them choose uh, some some of their favorite smithereen songs. So it's it's interesting that way, um, and uh, their choices are interesting. So but <laughs> I, I'm up for the challenge. Yeah, you know, why not? Songs like songs like Movie Tuesday from the first album, you know, is. Uh, it's cool, you know. Um, so uh, it's it's fun doing those uh, deep album cuts. Yeah. And, and you know what? People are coming to see us. They know the songs, so it's not going to be like, uh, you know, hey, we're, they're playing this obscure song I never heard before. Right. You know. Um, no, that's all good. I mean, I I can't. You know, when you when you wrote. And one of my favorite places, like anybody else, White Castle Blues. I mean, the Belly Bombers. I mean, that is like you, you gotta laugh your ass off when you hear something like that. That is that's pretty cool. That only like people in New York and New Jersey would really understand. Every time I go down to Seventeen, I go ah White Castle. I go down to the city, you know. I'm like ah White Castles. I'm like oh my god. <laughs> that's funny. I, I don't know if you know this, but I'm in the White Castle Hall of Fame. All right, <laughs> they actually have one. <laughs> and, you know, I was talking to little Steven about this, you know, and, and he said, wait a minute, there's a White Castle Hall of Fame? <laughs> yeah, that's... Yeah, and I'm in it. And actually, we're, um, we're up for uh, being in the New Jersey Hall of Fame, and they're going to announce the, uh, the winners um, at the end of January, so it's really, we'll, we'll get into that. Yeah, no, I, I did see that online, and I just haven't seen the results yet, or maybe I'm just not Googling it right, but no. I was no, gonna... end of January. Oh, great, great. I want to talk to you about the, your, your guitar, you know, playing as a guitarist. I noticed, and I love the sound of a Rickenbacker, and I noticed in the early parts, like, um, only a memory. I mean, I love just the sound, and I think you kind of switched over to a Telecaster. What, what's your guitar? What, what's your go-to guitar these days? Well, I, I still use the, the, the Red Rick that I used on the Blood and Roses on, on the first album and the first tour. I still bring it out when I travel by car, but I don't uh, take it on a plane. So. Uh, I'll be using the Rickenbacker this weekend, and uh, and also bring the Telecaster for for certain songs. But yeah, the Rickenbacker is, is wonderful. It's a 1972 or 73. I forget what year it is now, but um, it's a great guitar, and uh, and and so is the the Telecaster because I it travels well. It's a workhorse, and, and you can beat it up, and it, it'll stay in tune. Um, I think what you're you're thinking of the Green Thoughts tour. I switched to an SG for a while because I, I was going through some okay. Johnson phase. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, it was it was my Pete Townsend phase. I was playing an SG, but I don't bring that one out anymore. It's very temper metal, and I can't keep it in tune. So how um, how would how you know? I always you know talking to Joe Walsh and Joe Satriani and. Billy Gibbons and Eric Johnson not too long ago. How would you describe your tone 
Jim, you know, you grab, depending on the guitar, how do you describe, you know, your heart and soul, what comes out of it? Wow. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's a good question. I mean, uh, you know, for the rockers, I, I don't play too distorted. I, I play, I've always used a Marshall amplifier, and it's it's not that distorted. It's got like the, a nice crunch, right? You know, and, and a lot of young guitar players, they think, oh, like Zeppelin's first album, it's all like yeah, heavy distortion, but it really wasn't. It was, I think it was a Telecaster through a Fender Princeton app or something like that. So I, I like to, um, I want people to hear the subtle subtle things that I do. You know, picking the notes or the way I strum, I. I use dynamics with my hands. I, I don't use any pedals. The only pedals I have is a tuner and a booster for the solo. Okay. And uh, I don't use any pedals. So if I need to play a ballad, I'll just lower the volume on the guitar a little bit, and then it's cleaner. <laughs> for, no, you know, it's, it's... And I turn it up, and it's got the crunch. And if I step on the booster for the uh, solos, then it's got even more sustain. So uh, that works for me. No, you got a, you got a great sound, my friend. Keep doing what you're doing. Hey, getting back to Robin and Marshall, is there um, any new music on the horizon and working with those guys? Yeah, I mean, we talk about it, and uh, that's going to take some time because everybody has their own career also, and we all have busy schedules. So, uh, and just getting together to play is hard enough. Uh, with with everybody, so um, it, it is it, it is a possibility, a very good possibility. I mean, you know, I'll be pushing for it. Excellent. Well, uh, you know, I when you guys first came out, you know, I I don't think you ever got the um, the right recognition that you deserved. I mean, it just. When you talk to somebody like the Smithereens, so underrated, but such a great band. I always related to his simple, clean, no frills, rock and roll sound. You know, I said to my buddy the other day, I said, if REM was from New Jersey, they, you know, even the Jim Blossoms, they could be a twin sister of the Smithereens, but, you know, they're not from New Jersey, so it's not going to happen. But you guys, yeah. I just always felt you, you never got the great recognition you deserve, and you guys are all fantastic, incredible musicians. And I'm looking forward, let me guys, like, talking to you, bring up your, uh, bring up the date so everybody knows. Uh, Jim and guys are uh, Thursday night in New Hampshire. I will be at the show at the Ridgefield Playhouse on Friday. New York City at the Sony Hall on Saturday. They head down to Virginia on the 18th. I encourage you to go to officialsmithereens.com is their website. Check out Jim and the Smithereens on their Facebook page. They got some nice 2019 tote bags and uh, now and then signed prints of uh, a little self-portrait by Jim. It looks pretty <laughs> funny. <laughs> You're going to sell them at any of the gigs? <laughs> Uh, I haven't, you know, maybe I should put those there. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, they look, they look pretty cool. Well, no, Jim, I was, I was, yeah, go ahead. No, I'm just going to say I, I thank you for your time and wishing you guys all the best and uh, much continued success. Keep doing what you're doing. Keeping Pat and your music alive. It's all about live music anymore. And uh, I'm going to do my best to keep playing the smithereens, keep all uh, the fans happy and looking forward to uh, seeing you Friday night. Oh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it very much. I hope you enjoyed the chat as much as I did, my friend. Yep, yep, thank you, thank you. All right, Jim, Jim Babchek of the Smithereens on WBXO. We are classic rock, and we are redefined.